Today on Engine Power, the guys honor an iconic family in the automotive aftermarket and build a blown mouse to show their respect. Today on Engine Power, we're celebrating the 60th birthday of an American engine icon. Now, the Chevy small block debuted in 1955 and became the most successful engine in automotive history, with over 100 million of them being built. Now, just think about that for a second. We're honoring this celebration by building a blown 350 cubic inch small block that will mix the old school engine platform with new age supercharger technology and the latest in Edelbrock's electronic fuel management. It was easy to make this happen because we sourced everything from one place, Pace Performance, who specializes in GM's entire line of performance and genuine GM accessories, plus over 40 aftermarket manufacturers for all your go-fast needs. Like Edelbrock, who played a major role in the 350's claim to fame, they've been on the leading edge of making small block Chevy power. Until 1955, the automotive performance world was dominated by Ford Flatheads. But that all changed when Chevy introduced an engineering breakthrough, a radical all-new small block V8. Most compact, most advanced power plant in the industry. The so-called 265 TurboFire V8 was full of innovative features. A lightweight cast iron block, an overhead valve design, and stamped steel rocker arms, to name a few. Chevy's new mouse motor quickly captivated the performance aftermarket. And I got to run the first tests on a small block Chevy. Vic Edelbrock Sr. led the pack in pursuit of more small block horsepower, securing three of the new engines for testing. My dad said, well, let's make a manifold. So he made a three carburetor manifold, 20 horsepower. And every change he made resulted in more horsepower. I mean, everything they did, it just went right up the ladder. And, and everybody, well, eyes were wide open. But it didn't stop there. In 1958, Vic became the first person in history to achieve one horsepower per cubic inch from a 283 small block Chevy using his own ramlog manifold. Each new small block version signified a new performance parts challenge and opportunity for Edelbrock. As the small block Chevy continued its 60 year progression, Edelbrock was right in stride, offering total power packages crate engines, and other advances to help racers and street machine builders alike. From carburation, to fuel injection, to this all new supercharger for the classic small block Chevy. With the same advanced technology they pioneered for high tech LS engine blowers. Vic Edelbrock Jr. has hailed the E4 supercharger as one of the best things to happen to his company in its 75 plus year history. And this Enforcer version is probably the best thing that's happened to small blocks in a long time. Now this is a traditional positive displacement unit that's ideal for street rods and muscle cars. Now inside are Eaton's Gen 6 2300 TVS internals. The four lobe design with 160 degrees of twist allow for maximum flow, minimum temperature rise, and quiet operation. Our version is for EFI. Our foundation is this ZZ short block which is used as the base for the ZZ4, ZZ430, and the Fastburn 385 crate engines. It's a four bolt main cast iron block with a one piece rear main seal. Its crankshaft is a forged 1053 steel unit that's internally balanced, giving us the assurance it will withstand all the additional power from the supercharger. The connecting rods are a forged LT4 powdered metal for a 5.7. The pistons are a light hyperutectic flat top with dual valve reliefs and an offset pin. They're the same ones used in LT1 Corvettes. To get us from short block to long block status is all Edelbrock. Now we'll be using the Roland Thunder hydraulic roller camshaft, 1.5 ratio roller rockers, push rods, and aluminum E-Tech 200 cylinder heads for small blocks. The camshaft's going in first. Now it's operating ranges from 1500 to 6500 RPM. Duration at 50 thousandths is 234 on the intake and 238 on the exhaust. Lobe separation angle is 114 and lift at the valve is 539 and 548 respectively. Now it's secured with a cam plate that does the same function as a cam button. It limits its end play. The timing chain is a single row from pace. Now we're setting it straight up, which is recommended for this build. 
With the cam bolts torqued to 18 foot-pounds, this two-piece Edelbrock timing cover can go on. Now it's designed this way so the oil pan does not need to be loosened for a camshaft swap. With anti-seize on the crank snout, this six and three-quarter inch professional products balancer can go on using our Matco installer. Now we'll focus our attention to the bottom end. Pace sent the Melling high volume oil pump. Pressed on and welded is the pickup that matches the pan. An ARP stud will locate it and torquing the nut to 40 foot pounds with ultra torque lube will hold it in place. The pan is as straightforward as they come. A stamped steel design that uses two rails to avoid warpage and eliminate gasket leaking issues. With the bottom finished up, we'll get to the top after this. Next, proof that power can be beautiful. We're back and doing just what we said, continuing with the top end. Now the pre-lubed roller lifters will drop into the bores and get aligned with these stock lifter guides and get held down with the spider. Cleaning the deck with lacquer thinner will remove the rust protection coating and give the Edelbrock head gaskets a good surface to seal to. Edelbrock's Performer RPM E-Tech cylinder heads are a direct replacement for small blocks equipped with a Vortec manifold. Now the intake runner is the LT1 raised style design for improved airflow. Back here in the combustion chamber, the spark plug hole has been moved more towards the center of the cylinder for a more complete combustion cycle for even more power. Now they come equipped with a 202 intake valve, a 160 exhaust, and a 64 cc combustion chamber. They're equipped with 3 8 rocker studs and valve springs for our roller cam. Now this combo will give us a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. ARP bolts torqued to 65 foot-pounds will cinch them down. The push rods are spec'd by Edelbrock for this combination. Now they have hardened tips for long life and measure 7.200. Continuing on, we can install the Edelbrock 1.5 ratio rocker arms. Now they're CNC machined out of lightweight aluminum and the 4140 steel poly locks will secure them in place. Because this is a hydraulic roller, we'll set up each rocker at zero lash plus a quarter turn on the poly lock. This is done by turning the engine over to TDC on a compression stroke on each cylinder and setting them at the same time. When done in the firing order, it's easy to keep track of your progress. Here's a quick tip. Having the intake off for this operation lets you see the plunger travel of the lifter. It's easy to make the mistake of bottoming out the push rod when setting the lifter preload by feel. Like this one, it's actually bottomed out. If it happens when you start setting your preload, the valve will be open 100% of the time and at minimum you will have a dead cylinder and at worst the valve could bend or break off by hitting the top of the piston. Finally, it's time to get down to business and bolt down the crown jewel of this build, Edelbrock's new E-Force Enforcer Supercharger System. It combines old school bowler flash with high tech internals to produce boost in both Chevy small blocks and LS applications. It fastens down like any other intake manifold with gaskets in place and silicone on the china rails. We'll torque it to 28 foot-pounds. With lube on the O-rings, we can drop in the supplied injectors and cap them off with Edelbrock's fuel rails. Before the valve covers go on, we'll lube the rockers and springs with motor oil and seal all this up with the Classic Series valve covers. The front of this blown ZZ4 needs some attention now by installing the front end accessory drive. It starts off by installing a 5 16 stud into the intake. Then screw this hex spacer onto it and tighten it down. The polished FIAD bracket attaches to the front of the blower assembly and gets extra support by attaching to the hex with the supplied hardware. Attaching to the main bracket is the spring loaded tensioner, followed by the beefy idler pulley. This polished long style Edelbrock water pump will keep this boosted mouse cool and giving it the ability to be turned is a polished pulley. Now we can position the lower pulley and water pump belt in place and sandwich it with the new anodized aluminum blower drive pulley from the kit. The gator back blower belt finishes it all off. Now up top we can drop the new throttle body gaskets on the studs and place the dual 1000 CFM throttle bodies in their final resting place. Now we can tighten them down, making sure the return spring bracket is in place. Now to tie the two throttles together, 
an additional linkage kit from Edelbrock has to be purchased, which is simple to attach. We're as far as we can get out here, so everything else is going to happen inside the dino cell, and that's where we'll all be after the break. We're back, and the first thing we'll do is get the dino's water hoses, fuel lines, oil pressure line, and boost reference attached. Now the fuel injection harness is all plug and play. Now we'll start by connecting it to the throttle position sensors, the idle air motor, water temp sensor, injectors, and MAP sensor. This little circulating pump will force coolant through the intercooler system to keep the air temperature entering the engine much cooler. Now that coolant gets chilled by this heat exchanger that's positioned in front of your vehicle's AC condenser, or in our case, on the front of the dyno cart. Priming a freshly built engine can mean the difference between premature failure and longevity. It's 45. Distributing the spark is an Edelbrock billet distributor with a reluctor to identify camshaft position. Lighting off the air fuel mix are Champion RC9YC spark plugs. And connecting the two are MSD 8.5 millimeter wires. The ProFlow 2 ECU gets connected now, which is preloaded with the file we need for this combination. It will require some tuning, which is all done through this handheld supplied with the kit. Finally, we can apply power to the fuel system and check for leaks. And the handheld should display values the sensors are reading on the engine. And it does, which means we're ready to fire it up and set base timing. All right, you ready? Here we go. All right, temp's good. You ready? I'm ready. Let's Here do we it. go. As I apply the throttle, the engine's loading up really nice. Now, starting this week, it's accelerating through the entire RPM range without any issues, which is a good sign. 518, 497. That's number for number what Edelbrock that is. That is pretty impressive right there. That is cool. All bolt-on stuff, all good. Smooth, sweet, 10 pounds of boost, right where it should be. Air fuels were 12, 4, 12, 3 to 1 at wide open throttle. Man, first pull. I love it. Nice job. Very, very cool. All right. Now, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to make a few more or get a little heat so it can go backwards because it's a blower side. I agree. Let's see what she does. It's not only making great power, it's got the looks to go with it. We'll call it new nostalgia. Very nice. This thing sounds cool. I want it. <laughs> so do I. And it does neither. That's repeatability. 497 and 518 horsepower again. It's very impressive. Good streetcar motor. Very good streetcar motor. This engine goes to show that using Edelbrock parts in their supercharger can give you a lot of power in your ride. Now this was all plug and play and super easy to install. Now you can order the parts in three different ways, individually, as a top end package, or as a complete crate engine that Edelbrock offers that you can purchase at Pace Performance. Now I like the last way. Just log on to PowerNationTV.com and enter yourself in the sweepstakes to win this exact engine. And for all you guys that already have a small block and are looking for more performance, coming up, some basics on how to prep your block before it goes to the machine shop. We gearheads like to do as much as we can ourselves, both for the satisfaction and to save money. But we still need to rely on a quality machine shop to do the things that we can't do. That being said, a lot of prep work can be done to your project before you take it to the machine shop. Now once you get your bullet torn down to the bare essentials, some simple grinding work, tapping, and thread chasing can make it a lot easier on your machinist and your wallet. All the work we'll perform will help improve performance by speeding up the oil flow back to the pan sump and help eliminate some turbulence in the oil galleys which can increase the engine's oil pressure. We'll start off using a deburring tool on every bolt hole on the block using a hand drill on low speed. Now you're not trying to dig a hole, just clean up the edge on the top. Now we'll chase every threaded hole. Matco makes this excellent 51 piece kit that includes thread restoring taps, dies, and files for both metric and standard applications. Now the cost is only 140 bucks. Spraying WD-40 in the bolt holes before chasing them will help loosen debris, which lessens the chance of snapping off the thread chaser and creating a large problem. 
Also make sure you have the right chaser for the threads you'll be cleaning. Don't use a drill. This needs to be done by hand so you can feel if there's any resistance as the chaser gets deeper. Once bottomed out or passed through the hole, simply reverse the rotation and back it out slow. To wrap this procedure up, place a rag over the hole and blow it out with compressed air. Now the rag will catch some of the debris and now you have clean threads. A machine shop will charge one hour of labor for this, which will cost between 60 to 75 bucks. Next up is a little work with the die grinder. Now the first task of this tool is to remove all the sharp edges off the entire block. That'll make it much more easier to use because the block will not have the ability to slice up your hands anymore. Pass over the edges using light pressure. A lot of material does not have to be removed here, just enough to remove the knife-like edge off all the corners. Make sure safety glasses are used because the fine metal slivers produced by this type of burr will ruin your day if you get one of these in your eye, much less your skin. Anywhere casting flash or casting seams are located are considered stress risers. These are areas where cracks usually start. So the next thing we'll use the die grinder for is to actually add a little crack resistance to the block. This is done by removing the stress risers with a carbide burr for steel. This really doesn't add strength, it helps eliminate a place for a crack to start. Let the burr do the work. Light pressure on the grinder will keep it from bouncing around and causing more harm than good. On the front of the small block Chevy block are three oil galleys just above the cam tunnel. Now the center one feeds the mains and the outer two feed the lifters. Now normally they're plugged with little press in plugs like this, but these have been known to come out causing a loss in oil pressure. So to avoid that, we're going to show you an old racer's trick. Using a quarter inch pipe tap, we're going to thread holes into the galleys. Now the cool part, no drilling is needed. First, lubricate the tap so it cuts easier and doesn't gall the threads as the tap goes deeper. Now since the threads are tapered, make sure to go deep enough so the pipe plug has enough thread engagement to make it sit flush with the block so it doesn't interfere with the timing gear. But they'll have to come out before heading to the machine shop. Another area that could stand some attention is the oil filter boss. This is where filtered oil enters the engine. There are three places we'll chamfer. The first is where oil from the pump enters the oil filter. Knocking an edge off to make a nice smooth transition is the object. The same goes for where the filtered oil is directed back into the engine's oil galleys. Doing this will prevent turbulence and speed up the oil flow, which will build a little more oil pressure. With that added pressure and volume, we want the oil in the lifter valley to flow back to the oil pan sump as fast as possible. That way, the engine doesn't run into an oil starvation issue. Using the carbide, the rough edges of the drains will be removed as a slight bevel towards the bottom will be shaped. Now this will remove restrictions caused from the rough casting, allowing the oil to pass through faster. The rear main cap also gets a little work where the oil pump bolts to it. Smoothing out the sharp edged hole will increase oil flow in this area as well. Finally, we can swap the burr out for a cartridge roll setup and go over everything that was touched with the burr to clean up any tool marks. What we've done to this small block Chevy is universal for any engine. And it's little details like this that can make a big difference in both helping ease of assembly and helping your engine last longer.